What do we think? New hat? Well, I've had it a while, but I quite like them. I don't know, they don't really keep your ears warm. I'm inside, so what does it matter? You know, who else really wears a hat inside? Anyway, onto the video, the reason you are here. A few weeks ago, I did a video about Topaz Labs. If you didn't already know, Topaz Labs are a company who use artificial intelligence and design artificial intelligence to help us as photographers and videographers to produce the best quality work possible. A few weeks ago, I touched on the Topaz Labs photography bundle, and a lot of you got in touch with me over on Instagram and said that Topaz Labs is amazing and you can't believe how well it helped with your photography. But there were a few others who wanted a little more in depth into Topaz Labs. So today I thought that I would go through Topaz Denoise. Topaz Denoise is my favorite out of the three, which is Gigapixel and Sharpen because you can do so much more with it and it kind of helps sharpen your image just the right amount without having to use anything else. You can buy the Denoise program on its own and you don't have to have Lightroom to use it. You can use it as a standalone program, but obviously it's a lot more economic, I guess you could say ergonomic, economic. The workflow is a lot better if you do use Lightroom because you can go in and out of Lightroom very easily whilst using Topaz. And obviously it's a lot cheaper if you buy all three, but I don't make any money off this. So it's entirely up to you what you wanna do. So here in Lightroom, I've got a few photos which I've taken in the past and all of them are a relatively high ISO. This one in particular is 8,000. The next one is 8,000 again. The next two, I believe, is 2,000 and 6,400. And if you zoom in on these, you can definitely see the noise in the background, especially where the bokeh is. And that is what we're gonna get rid of using Topaz Labs Dean Noise. Now, some of you may be saying, well, noise is quite a common thing in photography and I quite like it. Yes, fair enough, you may like the green aspect of it, but I really like to tidy everything up, especially when I'm doing wildlife photography. And if I want to add green, then I like to choose how much green I add in post using the green option inside Lightroom and not just letting the camera do it for me. So if you're using Denoise as a standalone program, then you can just drag your photo straight into it. Whether you're using RAW or a JPEG, it doesn't really matter. But if you are using Lightroom like I am, then you're gonna go down to your photo in the film roll at the bottom, right click, go to edit in, and then Topaz Denoise AI. If these options come up, just make sure that you've got the same as what I have, and then just click edit. Now something to remember is when you're using artificial intelligence on your computer to edit any kind of photography or video, it will be very strenuous on your system. So if you have an older computer, just expect it to take a little bit longer than it would on something like a brand new M1 Mac computer, you know one of the fancy ones. So depending on whether you've used Denoise already on your computer or whether this is your first time opening it, it may look a little bit different to how you see it on my screen right now. At the top of the screen, you've got four options, beginning with single view. So if you click on that, it will show you the AI model which you have selected on the right hand side. The next one is a split view. Split view will give you this line down the middle and that will allow you to drag it across from left to right. The next option is the side by side, which personally I don't really like using, but you have the original on the left hand side and then on the right hand side, you have the after, which is included with the AI model. And then finally, which is possibly my favorite to use is the comparison view. And this will allow you to see all the AI models, which Topaz offers in Denoise side by side. But every time you make an alteration, it will take a few seconds to update as it updates every single one. Obviously, you have four images right in front of you. Now, as standard, you can't see the original image whilst in this four-way comparison view, but if you select one of these to make it purple, so we'll say the standard one, and then come up to the top and choose original, you can click and hold it, and it will briefly show you the original, and if you let go, it will go back to the standard version or whichever AI model you have in that particular window. So to begin with, let's just bring down the recover original detail on the right hand side and also the color noise reduction. So you can just see the AI models work into their full potential. A lot of the time I like to leave the model preferences on automatic and you can choose to have them automatic or not by pressing this little button up here and then you can grab these and move them around to wherever you want. Now let's just look at the characteristics between these four and each one is ever so slightly different. For instance, the standard in this example is really nice as it still retains the detail over in the face of this subject, so the squirrel. And the bokeh is incredibly clean and has no noise whatsoever. Whereas the clear one, that still has noise in the background in the bokeh. So for this image in particular, I definitely say standard is winning so far between the two. Now when you go to the low light and severe noise AI models, that 
that will be a lot more processing and you will start to lose more detail because obviously same as Lightroom as you increase the noise reduction everything seems to go that little bit soft and you can definitely see the same thing happening right here because the bokeh is still really really clean in comparison to the clear but the detail on the actual squirrel's face is starting to disappear obviously because it's fur so fur has a lot of detail and the AI model probably thinks that the fur or the little bits of detail is noise so therefore it's making the fur a lot less sharp than what it really should be so let's go down to the AI model and select it and then recover the original detail and just push up to 54% and just see what it actually does if anything now let's go to 100 and I feel that that's just adding more noise to the actual image rather than adding detail to it. So I would probably say in this instance in particular, the standard one is my favorite. If you're using the full comparison view, you just need to select standard by highlighting it in purple and then click apply. And that will automatically bring that back into Lightroom ready for you to export. When the photo comes back into Lightroom, it does save as a separate image, but if you want to hide all the images which you've already edited, you can highlight all your film roll at the very bottom using Command A or Control A if you're using Windows, right click and then come up to Stacking and then collapse all stacks. And that will group all of your images. So if you have three versions of that photo using Denoise and Sharpen, and then the original for instance, then the, the last version of it will be on top. So if I go over to the first photo, you will see that it's got no Lightroom alterations, but it is the editor photo, which has come directly from Topaz. So let's say we've got loads of photos and we want to reduce the noise and batch process all of them photos at once. Well in Topaz you can, but as I've said before, the more photos you put in or the more work you get Topaz to do, the longer it's going to take. So please bear with it. All you need to do is select your first photo with your mouse, hold down command or control if you're using Windows and then select each individual photo. Or if you're wanting to select them all from a certain point, from point A to point B, you can hold down shift. So we're gonna choose the first and last photo and then all all three are highlighted. As before, right click, go to edit in, and then edit in Topaz Denoise AI, and let that load for a moment. So when your photos are loaded, once again, you can go through and choose each individual AI model that you wish. If you want to apply the same AI model to them all, you can choose select all, and then choose the AI model right in the top right corner, and that will change the AI model to clear or whatever one you want to use. But my recommendation would be still to check each individual photo to ensure that the results are exactly what you want. And if for any reason you need to change your individual one, just get rid of the select all, go to the one that you wish, and then you can choose a different AI model on the right hand side. Once you're happy with all the results inside Topaz, you just need to press select all and then come down to the right hand side and click apply. And that will export all your photos back into Lightroom the same as we did with the squirrel photo right at the very beginning. Another option you've got in Topaz Denoise is to use a mask function the same as what you would have in Lightroom or Photoshop. To access that, it's the exact same as you would in Photoshop. Come down to the right hand side and you see this little symbol right here. You can click on that and then you can add in a mask to wherever you want. So if you only want to affect a certain part of your image, you just draw that out and that's obviously in red. If you make a mistake, you can go to the subtract and then take that away just the same as you can in Lightroom and Photoshop. And you can also invert the mask to affect the opposite of what you've already selected. And there we have it, a really easy way of cleaning up your photos with just a few clicks using artificial intelligence. I really enjoy using Topaz Denoise over the other two of Gigapixel and Sharpen because you can clean up your image, but you can also add that effect of sharpen sharpening and retaining all the detail all inside one single plugin. Hopefully this video has helped you out and gave you the confidence to be able to go out and shoot at a high ISO. Remember it's more important to shoot a high ISO and then use noise reduction in post than to drag your shutter and then not have the photo as sharp as what it could be. If you haven't seen the other Topaz video where I talk about Gigapixel and Sharpen then I recommend you check out the video right here. As always thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video hit the like button as it really really helps me out and allows me to show this video to more people if you want to see more videos just like this then hit the subscribe button and if you do i will see you right there thank you very much for watching